I'm Abby. I'm Tapnut Stitcher. It's great to see you. I just recorded a quick little intro with Jam, and he decided he needed playtime, and so I tried to talk while I was distracting him, and it really did not work for us. So here we are again. Well, here I am again. Um, and I'm so excited to hang out with you all. I'm trying to get like a little bit more consistent with a regular like end of month slash beginning of month update um, because I really enjoy that and I enjoy when other floss tubers make things consistently um, and I aspire to do that in my own life because I'm forgetful and it helps. It helps me. Um, how's it going? Let's see. Today I have, sorry, I just noticed that my computer is not plugged in as I thought it was, so it's going to die if I don't plug in the right thing. Um, I hope you've had a great summer, a great July, a great all the things. Um, I can't believe that it's almost August, but I am so excited that it's almost August because that means the floss tube retreat is upon us. I leave in like three days. Let's see. Today's Saturday. I leave. I fly out on Wednesday. So I've got like three full days to get ready. I'm not ready. But I'm so excited to uh, see my friends and to meet new friends. And um, I'm really excited. I got to meet so many people at StitchCon who will also be at the Floss Tube New Jersey retreat. Um, and I'm taking my mom with me. So um, for Mother's Day this year, I surprised my mom with a ticket to the New Jersey retreat. And so she gets to come with me. And I'm so excited to share more of my stitchy world with her. My mom quilts and cross stitches and is a very talented, creative lady. Um, but she's never gone to a cross stitch. Well, she's, she used to be in the Embroiderers Guild and would go to like cross stitching classes and retreats and stuff all the time. But she's not been to like a floss tube retreat. And this is like a next level thing. Um, so I hope that, I hope it lives up to the hype that I'm giving it. It will, it will. It's going to be great. Um, but I'm really excited to get to take her and hang out with her. I was running errands today, getting ready for this trip, and um, I got my car washed. I I barely ever drive my car, <laughs> um, and it, it's parked outside. And I realized I hadn't driven it for, like, almost two weeks. Um, and I went to it today to go run some errands. It was so sad and dirty, and so I took it to the car wash, and it looks much better now. Um, but down the corner from the car wash is a McDonald's, and McDonald's is like my one, not my one vice, but like, if I drive past a McDonald's, I will probably stop and get a Diet Coke. Luckily, I don't drive that often, so, and there's not all that many McDonald's drive throughs or McDonald's near me, so that helps. Um, okay, what are we even going to talk about today? I'm going to share with you a little bit of what I've been stitching on the last few weeks. I'm going to talk about what I'm thinking of taking to New Jersey, and I figured I would also just share a little bit of, like, what I've learned going to cross-stitching retreats and kind of my approach when packing for a retreat. This is not going to be, like, a packing tutorial video by any means, but just kind of walk you through what I'm, what I'm going to do. Um, and maybe just some like retreat prep chat expectations, how I like to live my life, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll talk about retreat stuff. I will share some new things that I've acquired in the last few weeks. There probably are a couple things in here that I showed last time and just forgot. <laughs> so chances are you forgot too. Let's be real. Um, so I have some new haul, I have some shop updates, um, and I have, I don't know, just general chit chat. And I have a couple books. I don't, I, I listen to both of them on audio, so I don't have anything to show, but help me remember, I have two books to talk about at the end. Maybe more. Who knows? Um, let's start, I guess, let's actually start with the shop updates, um, because I'm so excited about them. So I opened an Etsy store a couple months ago. Well, it's been open for a while, but I opened it with 
physical products for the first time a few months ago and it's done really well and thank you so much to all of you who have been supportive and encouraging in any format with that I really appreciate it um, I'm trying to shift my shop focus and inventory a little bit more towards the things that I personally just like love like cats and Harry Potter and the moon um, and also things that like other people love. So currently it's like a lot of what other people love and a little bit of what I love. So I'm trying to just balance that a little bit more. Anyway, I'm sharing all of this because I will be doing a pop-up shop at the New Jersey retreat. So if you'll be there, come find me because I will have some needle minders and some bags and other little goodies for sale. Um, I'll also take pre-orders if you want to message me and pick out what's listed in my shop and I can make sure that I bring what you want. Um, I will also have some things that are not yet listed in my shop. So there'll be like a pre-release. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else important for New Jersey. No, I'm excited to be able to, uh, share some top notch shop goodness. Um, I went today, I was, I got coffee and they have this little like maker's row, at, uh, this one little outdoor shopping area in my town. Um, and so it's like eight or 10 different little like booths that you can rent out like different, it, there, it, there's a rotating whatever, but it's just like a little like tiny mini craft fair or like maker's fair. Um, and so today I went and I met this wonderful woman, G, and she has, um, some really, really cool products that are all about like making space for women and things that like, yes, I'm all here for it. Um, including this awesome moonstone bracelet. And I was like, well, you know, me and the moon, everything in her shop had something to do with the moon. It was dangerous, but this is the only thing I bought. There we go. Moonstone. And it's so pretty. It's this little tiny bracelet and I need to put it on my wrist. Um, why was I saying this? Oh, mm. why was I saying this? Oh, it was very inspiring to just get to like walk around these people who like make and love what they do, um, make things and get to sell and share. And it made me like really excited that I get to do a little bit of that through my online store and being able to, um, think ahead to being in New Jersey where I can do a little bit more of it in person. Um, which makes me really happy. So I'm excited to get stuff ready for New Jersey. Um, I've been, uh, often I make needle minders to order. So I've been making ahead, um, and trying to decide like which, which things to bring. Um, and it's just been a lot of fun to, to play around with it. I've also been doing a little bit more focused work on my, I don't know what I actually did with it just now. Ah, I have a few designs, nothing like super fancy, but just things that I have designed for myself or others. Um, and I haven't really like aggressively marketed them at all, uh, but I've sold a handful of copies of I think I have four patterns up right now um, and I've sold copies of each of them. So that makes me feel really validated that anyone can design. Um, but I wanted to share, I finally stitched the model stitch for one of my designs that I just love. It makes me laugh so hard. I designed it like two years ago and then never actually stitched it. And I finally stitched it. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Accio cookies. That is the only spell I would probably ever need in my life. Can you imagine? Oh, if you could just summon cookies. Oh, what a, oh, that would be so great. So I stitched this on 25 count Lugana two over two because I had it and it's gray and I love gray. We all know. Uh, it's just stitched in black other than the cookie. And then I've been toying with outlining the letters in like a gold magical color. Um, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So this is, it just makes me so happy. <laughs> um, and I'm, you know, I've been toying around with uh, doing some other uh, favorite 
snacks and things uh, in here. I also almost made the cookie, I mean the O's into cookies, but I decided that was a little too cutesy and I don't do like super cutesy, so I stuck with it as is. But I might chart it as a second option because I think that would be cute. Uh, my needle minder on here is Dobby, and that's from Jen, Delicious Threads. And I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with this yet, how I'm going to finish it, but I'm pretty, pretty in love with it. Um, I think I will try to maybe FFO it, if I can decide how, <laughs> uh, and bring it to New Jersey. And if not, I'll maybe just bring it anyway. But I'm really proud of it. I need to... Um, I need to iron it and I need to take a better photo for my shop and oh, I love it. So if you love cookies too, this is available as a PDF download in my Etsy shop um, and as are a few other little little doodads that I personally love and therefore I'm sharing with the world. I have gotten further with like getting other designs actually like finished and ready to uh, publish so that's been really exciting. I think it's such a it's such a gift of retreats is that you get to like be around super talented people and super creative people and see what everyone's doing and how they're like changing stuff up and um you know just like going outside the box like Ryan stitching on her denim jacket like that's brilliant um little things like that that's like oh, why didn't I think of that and also like what else can I think of um so I came back from StitchCon with a whole lot of different ideas percolating and I've been actually like making them happen a little bit which is great and special shout out to Jen and Ryan for being my like partners in crime and um encouraging all of our creative efforts <sighs> I just love it uh Michelle all of this background stuff is for you Mitch Stitch talked in her most recent video about how she really enjoys when there's like an interesting background to look at when she's like bored of whoever's talking, uh, which I just really appreciate because I've never thought of it that way, but I, I love it. I mean, like, what can you learn about this background that maybe is different from last time? I don't know. I find it kind of stressful as a background, but it's the best lighting and... It's all my shop stuff, so that's also, well, it's partly shop stuff. Anyway, Michelle, this is for you. I don't clean it up just for you to have extra things to look at. Okay, shop updates, mostly complete. I have a couple things that are not yet listed in the shop that I want to share with you. I found these wooden, they're like teething rings. But they're these little wooden rings and they are perfect as floss rings and I love that they're super minimal and just like simple and they fit on your thumb really nicely and I don't know I don't know what it is but I just love them so I've been using them for my projects where I have like monochromatic pieces I like that they're big enough um, that you can have like your like hank on it but you can also have a bunch of separate pieces because I I don't know. I just like it. I like it a lot. I like that it's really big. Uh, I just dig it. So I'm having a lot of fun experimenting with all possible different like thread organizers and holders for Fancy Floss and beyond. Um, and just regular, like I've been using these for DOC and stuff too. I don't, I don't know what it is. I just, I just like them. They'll be in my shop eventually. Um, along with that, I also found this little, uh, I, it's, I don't know, it just makes me happy, it's so cute. Um, I have been using these as a, or this, as a thread organizer on a project, and I actually just took a Sharpie and, like, wrote the numbers on, or the symbols, um, and it's working out a lot better than I thought, because, again, it's a little bit wider at the bottom, so you can have, like, your main uh, chunk of thread and then you can have like the one that you're working off of. I don't know. I just love it. Hi Jam. Look who's here. Jam. He meows all day long. 
but he does not seem to ever meow Oop, when there's a camera around. So rude. He was the cutest little meows. Anyway, speaking of cute little meows, how about some cute little paws? <sighs> Look at that! This is my new favorite item in the world. Um, Toe Beans Appreciation Club. <laughs> These are available as needle minders in my shop, and I love them. I will bring some to New Jersey. I should, I'll take a few out of inventory on my shop. Um, I will definitely bring some to New Jersey to sell. So cute. I love that it's orange because I've really come to love the color orange now that I have jam. <laughs> um, so I find myself I default to the orange heart emoji all the time, and just like if there's if there are color options and orange is one of them, now I pick it all the time, which I never used to. It's just been it's been a really fun thing to notice in my life, black and orange. So. I guess I have to be more into Halloween now. Anyway, that's a new shop item. What was the other one that I was? Oh, um, I also, <laughs> I really love Jurassic Park. Like, love Jurassic Park. And there are a few good Jurassic Park things out there. Oops, excuse me. But nothing can top that. That's Clever Girl. It's a raptor. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, so I only have like one of these left, I think, because you know I needed one and Birdie needed one. So those are just a few things in the shop. I will, like I said, bring some needle minder, mostly needle minders to New Jersey, but I will also be bringing some teeny tiny, teeny teeny tiny vinyl bags, uh, which I use as scissor fobs. You can keep a little like needle case in there. You can keep your orts in there. You can keep whatever you want in there. They're super handy and they're just so cute. Um, so I'll bring that. I'll be bringing a selection of needle minders and I will also have probably not too many, but a few of these bags. Um, I am not going to be restocking these, I don't think, so um, I'll probably bring what I have left, and yeah, I might bring, a, I, have a, I have a couple other styles, um, like I have a few of this type, which is a more like generic, you can find this a lot of places, um, most of them I have like a little a little set so you get a little mini one too. I will be bringing a handful of these super cool corner zip. It's brilliant. It makes it so easy to get your project out. It makes me so happy. Um, I really love using the vinyl bags for travel because I'm paranoid always about spilling something on my projects and a fabric bag just makes me nervous even if it's like vinyl on one side. So I really love these. Um, I think that's it for shop stuff. Yeah, that's it for now. Let's talk what else I've stitched on. So along with my beautiful model, I'm so proud of, I have been doing a little bit of stitching on random stuff. Um, this I plan to finish my portion at the retreat. Um, this is Mitchie's emblem of friendship, Mitch Stitch. Uh, we worked on our projects at StitchCon, and she was like, I don't really want to stitch this right now for her wreath part. So she stitched the emblem of friendship and like a couple leaves, and I was like, I'll take it. So I worked on it on the plane. I worked on it uh, for homework for a couple different things, like things you'd find in a forest, vines, um something you're bored of. I've already stitched this for myself. Now I'm stitching it for her. Uh, and I think one other like extra credit something. So it's almost done a little bit here and I skipped some, I skipped part of this because I didn't want to move my hoop. So I'm going to finish that up and take it to New Jersey and pass it off to someone else so they can put their initials in it. Let me refold this so it fits in this little bag. 
if you don't mind. And I'm also going to start making my New Jersey pile while we talk. So, New Jersey. This I am almost done with, and I keep almost working on it and then not working on it. Um, but it, he just needs a tea bag and some arms. And it's this little snowman. Oh, he's so cute. Maybe he was already at this point when I showed you last. I don't remember. Um, but I love him. This is on a random fabric. I don't know what it is. It's showing up way more purple in real life, um, or on the camera, I mean. In real life, it's a little bit bluer. But I like I like how it's showing up, too. It looks good. Um, and he's just so cute. And so he's supposed to have a little tea bag that, or, yeah, tag, like a tea bag tag that says iced tea. Oh, I use this. Um, I think I already told you all this, but I'll tell you again. I use this uh, for the... Homework or extra credit that was uh, to put stitches into a, a cemetery or a graveyard scene. And I did this because he's a snowman in a cup of hot tea that's going to be iced tea, but because he is melted. So he's basically standing in his own grave, which is a very dark way to look at a very cute pattern, but I love him. Um, so he's almost done. I think I've kind of just been saving him for... Um, like if there's another 100 stitches, 200 stitches kind of homework assignment, I'd rather just like wait and do him then because I'm not going to FFO him anytime soon. So let's be real. Um, I've also done a little bit more work. I don't remember how much I've done since I showed you last, but I've done a little bit more work on my Moon Dance Kathy Barrick. Um, It's just fun. I'm, I converted the colors to uh, Victorian Motto, so it's I think it's all charted in DMC, and I converted it to Victorian Motto and a couple um, classic color works, I think, just kind of randomly from my stash, and then one uh, Fiberlicious Silk that I really, really love because it is really nice. Um, Double zip bag. Oh, that's the chart. Whatever. Um, I'm really loving it. I love that it's like weepy, crazy colors. I might bring this to New Jersey. No. It's kind of obnoxious because it's so... Uh, it's only like seven or eight colors, but there's a lot of motifs that have a lot of colors in it. So that's not the best travel piece. I've done a little bit of stitching on my forest. This is And a Forest Grew by Rosewood Manor. Basically, I just did this tree, which I really love that tree. It's a nice little, like, gradient green. I really like it. Um, yeah. If you were with me at my table at StitchCon when I was having a panic attack because... Uh, to make to make Anna Force Grew a travel friendly project, I well now I've lost it, so that's great. Um, I pulled out a handful of colors and put them on a ring. So I just like looked at one page and pulled colors that were in the main motifs on that page. Um, so I had just a, like maybe fifteen or so bobbins that were not every color listed on that page, just like this areas. Colors. And I went to stitch and one of the bobbins label had fallen off and I was panicked because I had no idea. It could be one of a hundred colors that are in this, the whole project, or one of, you know, 70 colors that were listed on that page. And we tried pulling out our DMC color cards that Jen had, Jen and Arlene had found at Michael's and just like couldn't find it. I looked in the bag everywhere to see if it had just fallen off. But that was it. That was it stuck on the corner. So now I know that it was 3013, which I think was a contender, but we weren't sure. So now I have to find what I did with that ring of floss, and then I can relabel. Whew. That was close. Um, I don't think that And a Forest Grew is going to come to New Jersey, even though Emily, actually, Momily will be there. Um, Eclectic Possessions, this lovely moon bag. Uh, it's my only mommy bag, and I love it dearly. 
so I might bring it just so I can like show it off to Mamalee themselves. Um, also, Emily, I hope our moms can just become best friends because that would be really adorable, I think. Um, I did a little bit of stitching on this oldie but goodie. This is Good Intentions by Kathy Barrick. I did a color conversion that was um, inspired by my sister. She sent me, I had mentioned jewel tones, and so she sent me a bunch of jewel tone floss. And I'm stitching this on a random linen that I don't remember. And I love it. I've been stitching this in hand, and it is a really fun in-hand project. I might actually bring this one because it's a nice limited color palette and oh I just noticed that these stitches are a half stitch off somewhere that's fun I'll have to see if I can fix that over here um I need to give her a head <laughs> uh I couldn't I couldn't decide on a skin tone because I wanted to make her look like me and have a top knot and I'm very pale but I couldn't pick a, I couldn't find a pale color that I liked on this fabric this fabric is a little bit less orange than it's showing it's more fleshy uh, but I couldn't find the color and I was like well maybe I should just convert her skin to something else and then I just got stuck and didn't touch it story of my life but I would like to work on that because I've been working on that for what feels like forever. Um, I started it a long time ago. But I don't think... Um, I do like having something in hand for retreats, though. So let's put it in the maybe pile. Uh, and that's all that I... Oh, no. One more thing. I've been working on Matter's Choice by Caritas Sampling. Whoa. And I got this cool stand. Ryan Wild Violet had one at StitchCon, and I was like, tell me more. And so she sent me the link on Amazon. I'll link it below. It's awesome. You can sit on this part, and then this, um, like, this goes over, you know, you're sitting on it, so this is right in front of you, and I usually sit with it. Um, you can do it like that, too. So I usually sit on it like this and then have it in front of me. And I usually have it, like, propped against me in some way. Um, because it's kind of heavy with a Q-snap, but it does fit a Q-snap. Um, and I haven't been working on it for a while. It's been sitting in the corner. <laughs> so this is not how I... You can mess with it and find ways to make it better. And you can then adjust the height a little bit, which is fun. And I just really, really love it. Um, I did get my first pair of cheaters to go with it. And yes, I do usually do it like this with the double double glasses. Um, because this means I have my Q-snap in like a different position. Like normally when I'm stitching, I stitch kind of like this where it's just kind of like resting against my chest. And then I'm stitching so it's like right up in my face, which is fine. Um, but the beauty of this is that it doesn't have to be, <laughs> and it can still be, um, even though I can, I can move, you know, I, just, ugh, I can't talk, even though I can adjust the height of it, um, it means that my stitching is in a much different place than I'm used to, and this is 40 count, and so I'm being nice to my eyes, so I got my first pair of cheaters, um, and they do really, really, really help. I've been impressed. I love the look of the double glasses. Um, I can do just the cheaters and I don't really need my glasses. Um, I can see fine without my glasses. My eyes just get tired. So usually I'm stitching and watching something and so depending on like how much I'm looking up and down I will wear one or both. Um, anyway this is Matters Choice by I already said I think Caratel Samplings. I'm stitching this in Victorian Motto Deepest Blue, which is closest to 939, and I am stitching it on 40 count something or other. I used to have the little tag in here. I don't know where it is. It might be wrapped up on the fabric somewhere. 
but I really love it. I'm in a, in a race with Trisha, cross stitch throw down to finish it before her. Um, and I'm working on it for this week's homework of a thousand stitches in blue or black for um, umbridges ink in the quill. Well, that's not it, but just, I think just a quill. Not umbridges because hers is blood. Um, I'm also really proud of this and no one has commented yet, but this is the Mad Hatter that I am using for Matter's Choice. Get it? Mad Hatter? Matter. I'm proud of it. And it makes me chuckle. And then this is my fa new favorite, not new favorite, I had it last time, but my favorite grime card from Olivia, Worth the Fish, for the jam. I love it. End of ad even though I've had to finally get these. I got a couple, I got a pack that had a couple different strengths. So I have one and a half, which doesn't really seem to like do anything. And these I think are two and a half. So it's been good. I've been keeping my Matters Choice in my Delicious Threads bag. I added, I had this necklace that has a platform nine and three quarters. And at first I was like, oh, I could turn that into a needle minder. And then I was like, no, never mind. I'm going to turn it into a zipper pull for my Harry Potter bag. Awesome. I've really been loving finding uh, ways to use up like keychains and stuff of like things that don't really make a good needle minder. Um, I mean, this, this would be okay. Um, but just put them on a bag and then you still get to enjoy it and have a nice little tchotchke but it has a purpose, except it keeps turning around to the wrong side. Cute. Okay. Um, Matters Choice, I think, is going to come with me to retreat because it is a monochrome piece, and I really enjoy having monochrome things to work on where you don't have to worry about color changing, and that will most likely happen. I also have taken to doing this when I'm going to work on it shortly after. And it just keeps it nice and covered and free of cat danger. Jam really likes to chew on this. Can you see his bite marks? He's teething, apparently. He's been teething since he was like 10 weeks old, so I don't know what's going on there. Oops, I got my chart wet. From my cup. Okay. That is all. Oh, that's not all. Because I also had a start and finish since we last talked. Um, this was a pretty quick stitch. Uh, it's a new release by Wild Violet Cross Stitch. And I love it so much. I, I was... I stitched it and was like, oh, perfect. I could use this for my New Jersey Smalls exchange or something. And then I was like, I don't ever want to get rid of it. It's so good. Um, so this is the B and B, no, B by the moon. Can you even? It's so good. I love it. Um, so the charted colors are like a gold and a yellow kind of a thing. Um, but I went through my stash and I had these two, uh, Karen impressions. Let's see. I got these at, um, to shenanigans. We got them in our goodie bag. Yes. Impressions by Karen. So one color has no name. It just has a number. And the other one is Gobi Sand. And I don't remember which is which, but I did the moon and the bee's wings and part of his body in this just like nice off-white kind of a cream and then I have this like variegated pink gray orange muted deliciousness that I use for the border and the bee's body and I love it so much so it's like thicker than normal I just I just did one strand I think this is typically used more in needle pointing and such and so I didn't want to mix this with like regular DMC. I didn't know if that would look weird to have like this with one strand and then other stuff with two strands. So I wasn't sure what to do with these. Um, also, look at those cats. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with these two colors. And so I was looking for a monochrome piece. And then I just 
It was perfect. It was kismet. But not the Diana kind. Um, I love it so much. You can go to her website to download this pattern. I fortunately have plenty of room to stitch it again in the same color way this way. So I might do that. We'll see. But I love it. I am taking this to New Jersey to show Ryan in person. Maybe I'll FFO it. Maybe I won't. I need to take a better picture of it. Oh, I just love it. I'll stitch anything if it has a moon. Just anything. But especially if it's super cute like this. So it's in, <laughs> funnily enough, it's with my other recent finish, the Lunar Moth by Cozy Egg. Oh, I love it. So they're both insects and moons. So I guess I'll stitch whatever other insect moon patterns there are. Um, okay, so this goes in the New Jersey pile. I think I will also be bringing this new start, Polly Wally Doodle, um, that my dearest, is that upside down? Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, Polly Wally Doodle that my dearest Mitchie got for us to sister stitch after we did Zippity Doodah last year. Um, I haven't started it yet, but it's in my Diana bag. It's just like, I just, it just makes me happy. Everything about it makes me happy. Um, and it's only a few colors and I think it would make a great retreat project. We'll see. That is all the stitching I have to share with you. So let's talk a little bit more about the retreat and what I'm going to bring. Um, I, when I go, when I travel on the plane, I like to bring a project that has one to three colors. Like it doesn't have to be monochrome, but I want it to be simple. I like it to be a project that can fit into a small hoop, preferably a spring tension hoop because they take up such little space. Um, and then I also like it to be, um, a project that has like enough started, but not too much. I'm trying to find a spring tension hoop to show you. I mean, you probably know what it looks like. I don't know where any of my stuff is. Um, let's go faster than this. When I go on retreat, I like to take a project that I'm just like super proud of and want to be able to share like Anda Forest Grew. It's fun. That's a really fun one to get to show people in person because it's so tiny. Um, and it's fun to work on and you can pull just a few colors and pick out just a couple sections and it's, it's just nice. I like to have a project that is one or minimal colors on the plane. I like to have something that is also like minimal colors just so you don't have like a ton of stuff to deal with. Um, and then I like to bring something that like has blocks of things that can just be filled in or I don't know. I have learned I like to have choices and a lot of variety when I go on retreats because inevitably I will stitch on everything that I've brought and I want to be really happy with what I've brought and I want to want to stitch on all of it. So I usually bring five or six projects and stitch on five or six projects. Um, so for New Jersey, I'm going to bring good intentions because I can stitch it in hand and that's just handy. Um, I might do it on the plane. I might not. There's something, I don't know, somehow on the plane I actually prefer stitching with a hoop. I think that's because like you're already so constrained and I don't stitch in hand very often so um, like I only do it with a few, a few projects. I don't know. Um, some other things I'm bringing to New Jersey I have three works by ABC projects and I'm going to bring, I think all three of them. Um, they meet a lot of my criteria. Something with only a few colors, skeleton mosaic. It's charted for four or five colors. I think, um, it's a little bit of a challenge cause it's on dark fabric and that's something I usually avoid for a retreat, but it's, this is, um, my class schedule style fabric. <laughs> Look how much I've done. <laughs> Um, this is my class schedule sal fabric and it's 16 count Ada picture this plus. So it's a medium gray. It's not super dark, 
and it's Ada, so it makes it a little easier to see. Uh, and it's only a few colors. And it's interesting enough, the thing with the few colors is you also want to make sure that there's like, it, it's going to keep your interest. And this has like a woven border that's interesting and it's got the inside. So I'm not stuck just stitching a border forever. I can like count over here to the skeleton and do some cool stuff. Um, so I think that one will actually be a great, a great retreat piece. Maybe even this is a good plain piece. Great idea. Um, so I'm bringing that. It's in a double zip bag with Pepe. <laughs> that makes me happy. Um, I also had planned to finish this and I haven't touched it in a while. So we'll see if we can get to it. But if not, I'll finish it at the retreat maybe because it is like two thirds done. I don't remember which is the top anymore. Um, this is Not Your Needle in Cross Stitch, one of Arlene's newest, newish designs that came out like a month ago. Um, I'm stitching this on a mystery fabric. I'm stitching it in cinders. It's gorgeous. It looks like an old manuscript. I'm obsessed. I didn't need to start it in the middle, but I am bad at calculating that kind of thing. Um, and I'm like paranoid about running out of room. Um, I'm stitching this... I definitely did not need this much space for it because I'm stitching it um, one over one or two, I'm stitching it two over one on I think like a 28 count so it's pretty small um, and I was nervous that I wouldn't quite have enough border to be happy with it um, if I had stitched it two over two which is why I shrunk it down and I love that it's teeny tiny but I also I'm a little nervous so anyway I'm gonna take that to finish at the retreat or maybe this I'll stitch on the plane I think part of my brain thought if I like talk about the retreat with purpose then like a clear message will emerge it's not going to okay but this will come with me um, and then I also, I brought this to StitchCon because I wanted to show Arlene the, my fabric, or not my fabric, my thread dilemma, because I had started this with Floche, and it was just too, it's too thick. So I restarted it with just DMC and just one strand. Um, and it's on black, so this is not a great travel or retreat project. I also really could cut down the fabric that I'm stitching it on. Um, this is on a 25 count Lugana, and I do love it. Chorus and Jasper. Um, this is woven geometry in black work, I believe, because uh, I really wanted to get some black work under my belt, and Arlene never leads you astray. So I don't actually know if I'm going to bring this one, but it is a works by ABC design, so I might just so I can brag about how I know Arlene. Um, and then I started Quaker Gone Hunted for Mania. This is a national re release, yes, by Michelle Inc. And I just really, really loved it. Really loved it. I got my chart and my thread pack from Trish at Three Owl Threads. And I started it on this 36 count, no, 40 count, what is it, 36 count antique white linen that I had because it was fine. Um, but the called for is this like super cool hand dyed, model-y, gray, gloomy deliciousness and it's from Silk Weaver, which I will be visiting in New Jersey at Needleworkers Delight. So I only have this one leaf. <laughs> and so I might be acquiring the called for fabric and switching. I also really have been loving 40 count life, so I might also switch it to like 40 count for uh, maybe even 46. I don't know. 
But this is definitely going to come with me because I want to be able to see it in per if they have that color. I didn't even look up what color it is. See it in person and then make my decision. So that's one, two, three, four. That's five projects. Um, that feels that feels good. I will probably also pick out one more because I can. Um, let me show you now what haul I have acquired, and we're gonna get in under an hour here. I've been doing a lot of browsing on Stash and Load, and it's paid off really well. So I picked up for myself some Lakeside Linen Vintage Sand Dune 36 count. It's really nice. And you know what I think would look really nice on it? This gorgeous la -dee da sampler, Elizabeth Jones sampler. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. I haven't picked out colors, but I'm into it. I also... <laughs> I saw this random Instagram post of a really cute bear roasting a s'more, s'mores, over the campfire. Let me find it. And I immediately tagged Elena. Ooh. Sorry, I got distracted by a black work piece. I love black work right now. Um, this is from Just Cross Stitch, October 2016. And so I saw this random post on Instagram of a really cute little bear roasting his marshmallow his, for his s'mores over a campfire. And I sent it to Elena because Surge. And then I was like, actually, I love it so much. It's ridiculous. I need it. And so I found where it was from and I, um, I tracked down the magazine on, on eBay. Look at that! He's so cute! So I want to find a... Uh, I need to kit it up and stitch it because I just absolutely love it. And he's pretty small. He's only 70 by 70. That's not bad. Um, oh, he's so cute. So I love him. And then there's some other really cute little doodads in here as well. Um, that maybe I'll look closer at and possibly stitch. Who knows? But that's October, no, yes, October 2016. Not to be confused with Halloween 2016. Um, and Elena will totally give you that page after I'm done with the rest, or with stitching the rest. Let's see, what else did I get? Oh, yes! Okay, I still haven't kitted this up, and I really need to, but... I got Fendi Stitchies. We're all mad here. Alice is mad. Plant. Oh, so cool. I know her. Um, and I, I think I might run this past Michelle herself in New Jersey, but I have this like nice neutral scrap of something and I was going to put it on that, but then I got this. And I think like, ooh, that's fun. But it's also, it's like way bigger than it needs to be. So I feel like I need to, this is a 30 count honeysuckle lemon. And I want to really love it before I commit to that. So, Michelle, this will go in my New Jersey pile. Um, and actually I have, I, I have all the DMC for that. So I need to just put it in there. Um, I also got a pack of Weeks Dye Works on Stash Unload. That was Jam. He just moved to the computer. He's sleeping right behind you. Um, I got this pack of Weeks Dye Works. There's this kind of like five or six uh, dried sage and then also five or six, what color is this? Banana Popsicle. That just made me laugh. Um, and then a couple pinks and snowflake and let me just take it all the way out I guess um, so it was like pretty discounted which is always nice so I'll be able to throw especially all those dried sages into a bunch of different projects oh and an icicle 
So scored that. Oh, I should have mentioned um, Bendy's pattern. Wherever. Oh, I threw it, I threw it over there. Um, I picked this up from Three Owl Threads. Uh, Etsy is also being carried by 1884 Stitchery, and Michelle will have some copies in New Jersey, and Threads Entwined is carrying it, and I don't know who else. So, so proud of my super talented friends. Okay, um, also, I think I got this off of eBay. I just stumbled across it, and I really loved it. This is Christmas Stars 3 by The Work Basket. Look at that little raccoon. Look at that little mouse. Look at his ears. Are you kidding? Mm. I love it. Um, I scored these Rosewood Manor seasonal designs. Um, I got this whole set for $10 which is crazy. And I got to see the models for these at the StitchCon trunk show and they were gorgeous. And I was like, Oh, those are really pretty, but like, that's not really my thing. And I don't know. I don't really want to like spend my money. Um, I'll spend two fifty a season on it for sure. So we have spring, summer, autumn, which I love. I love that one. And winter. And then it turns out there's a few people who are doing a sale for this at New Jersey. So I need to kit it up need to pick out some fabric and also this is from 2018 are they all from 2018 copyright 2018 that's not like this is like a new release not a re-release I don't know um I love me some Rosewood Manor I love some nice um flowery planty things. I love that this is poinsettias and I probably won't stitch winter. I'll probably just put in more flowers there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I just, I'll need to pick out some colors for it. Um, they sell a thread pack for it. I know. House of Embroidery Threads. Okay. Yeah. I would, I'll have to figure out a conversion because it's just listed as House of Embroidery. There's no DMC. But I think I can figure that out. So I'm super excited about that. So actually, this is going to come to New Jersey, too. My New Jersey pile grows. Um, I also picked up this Splendor 5 by the Heart's Content Inc. on Sash Unload. The seller actually sent me the wrong chart by mistake, and... Um, I contacted her and so she sent me the right one and told me to keep the original. Um, so I'll be bringing it to, uh, New Jersey for the 3D table. It's actually a kit. It has the silk threads with it. Um, but I don't know. It's just something, again, monochrome I'm into. Um, I just really liked it. I like that it's like super compact. Like there's a lot going on in a small area. I like it. Um, this will stay home. That will stay home. Okay, a couple more things. Um, oh, let's save this one for the end. Um, I, Corey the Silent Stitcher, had the cutest owls that they had stitched, and I immediately went on Soda Stitch Etsy to buy this cute little autumn owl. And I haven't started it yet, so sorry. But on Session Load, I then saw these little owls and I thought like, oh, that's fine. But her, like the one that Corey was stitching, the pattern, the picture, like, yeah, it's cute. But the actual stitched piece that they had done, it was the cutest thing I've ever seen. So I'm trusting that these would also stitch up cuter than they currently look. I mean, they're pretty cute, but um, I really like this snowman one. I really like this, like, he looks like he's maybe had a few too many eggnogs. He's got antlers. He's not here for it. This cute little Santa one. The little Christmas tree one. I don't know. It's something about them I just love. Um, and I do love that Soda Stitch will like show you like, look, you can combine them in different ways. You don't have to stitch all five. You don't have to stitch them just one at a time. Um, so pretty excited for that. 
And I also love me some la-di-da. I might already have this pattern. I need to look and see. I don't know if it's just that I've seen it a lot, uh, but this is Oberty by la-di-da. So, needed that. Um, ooh, maybe I'll go get the NPS for it. Uh, NPS is near my office in San Francisco, and um, it's very fun to go in and buy silks. Okay, that's all of my haul to share. But I did also, Jam and I, oh no, it's not all my haul to share. One more, one more haul. Um, this is from the fabulous uh, sorry, I just got super distracted. I'm not going to share this one yet. I'm actually going to wait for New Jersey to share this. Um, secrets. Okay. I got a lovely gift. Um, Jam and I got the cutest, cutest package in the mail from my dear, dear uh, NorCal stitching friend, Kelly. And it just, it like, I knew it was coming because she asked for my address but I didn't know what it was going to be, obviously. And it just was so thoughtful and sweet. And Kelly, thank you so much. You are the sweetest. I can't wait to see you again soon. We've been trying to do some like stitching get togethers and it's not, it's not worked out. Uh, but we will, we will get there. Um, so she said, she wrote, sent me the sweetest card. She sent Jam some toys and, oh, they used to be right here. Um, she sent him some catnip bubbles. We haven't tried them yet. I've been saving it for the right moment. And maybe that'll be later today. Um, so some toys, some catnip bubbles. She sent me a Paddington needle minder because she knows I love Paddington. And um, Jam is named for Paddington. His full name is Paddington Marmalade III because we're real cool. Um, and she sent me a little Paddington bear. It's so cute. I love it. And then she also sent me the sweetest, um, well, first of all, do you know what color this is? This is Gast Orange Marmalade. Yeah. His namesake. Um, and then she sent me the sweetest little Silver Creek samplers pattern. And at first I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's really cute. I don't, I don't get it, but it's cute. I'm going to read you this adorable little, it's not really a poem. It's like a little story, a two sentence story. This tiny mouse lives in a house beneath the berry shade. Oh, it is. It is a poem. <laughs> this tiny mouse lives in a house beneath the berry shade. He gathers up the ripest fruit and makes sweet marmalade. <laughs> so, uh, yes, that is the cutest. And I want to rechart it to be oranges and make those oranges. I think that could work. I think I can leave it a mouse, but I might make it a jam. We'll see what happens. Jam would love if he had a mouse that made marmalade. Paddington would love that. I don't know. It's so sweet. Thank you so much, Kelly. I cannot wait to stitch this. This would look really good on that yellow fabric. That's the problem. I want to stitch everything on that yellow fabric. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Okay, Bendy. We'll have to find something else. Okay. That is it for... That is almost it for haul. I was at Joanne's today, and I always like to check out their remnants, because you can sometimes score, like, you know, half-yard cuts of colors that are fun and cheap. And so I always like to go check it out. And I got a whole yard of this for, it was like $15 a yard normally. And I got this for like 10. Um, this is, um, designed exclusively for Joanne. I was trying to remember like what the material actually is. It's rayon. Um, it's this gorgeous floral birdie thing. 
I plan to make headbands from it, like this one. Um, I didn't make this one. This is from Main Message. Um, but I love wearing headbands. <laughs> And I've been on the hunt for more and more like fabric ones like this that you just tie on and then you're good to go. And it's kind of hard to find good patterns out in the world. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute, you also can make your own. <laughs> you just. Um, so I saw this and I was like, yes, I need to wear that. Um, and so it's a full yard. And I actually asked if I could only get half of it because it was a remnant and I didn't think that was allowed, but it's not, it's not allowed. So I have a whole yard, which is like a million headbands and it's really thin. So like on its own, I guess with interfacing, it could be used for a project bag, right? Let's see. I don't know fabrics well enough, but it's not cotton, which is what I normally sew with. But I love it and I'm super excited about it. And so for $5, I can make myself a headband or two and some for everybody else I know. <laughs> so we'll see if I get to that or not. Um, let's see. That is all of my haul. I have two books to really quickly share with you. The first one is called Burnout, and it is um, a beautiful, beautiful nonfiction book that's all about burnout and stress and managing stressors and the physical stress. Stress, And it was a lot of stuff I already knew, but was like very validating and refreshing to um, hear it again. And a lot of it was like extra little nuggets that I didn't know before and the neuroscience behind it all, which is related to my job and I'm in the right line of work. Um, cause I just find it super interesting, but it was a really, it's a, it's a nonfiction book that's written in a really great, like conversational accessible way, but also teaches you like the real science behind stuff and why it is the way it is. And I just highly recommend it. If you feel stressed at any point in your life, <laughs> you could probably use this book. Um, I will link it below. I also would like to plug Melinda Gates' new book, The Moment of Lift. Uh, it's a really beautiful, encouraging, uplifting book um, about how empowering women changes the world. Um, and so you get to hear a lot about what their foundation does around the world. And you get to hear a little bit about her life and like why she does what she does. Um, and just a lot of good stories of like, oh yeah, we need more like love and kindness in the world and you don't have to have billions of dollars to do that. Um, or you have billions of dollars and you use it to do good work with love and kindness. Um, it was just really beautiful, uh, and she narrates it and it was lovely. I listened to it on my train ride to and from work for like three, four days this week and finished it. It's not too long. It's just... It's just lovely. So if you want to hear about good people doing good work, I highly recommend that book. Um, it covers a lot of facts and things that I already knew about, like what different, you know, world health saving things do. Um, but obviously I forget details. <laughs> so it gave, it reminded me of a lot of details um, and just gives you so many good, like, yummy stories about the world and um, really awe-inspiring women and just what happens when you give women access and education and <sighs> it's beautiful. With that, I need to clean this stuff up so that I can pack and get ready to uh, go to New Jersey and also do all the other chores and things I need to get done this weekend. Uh, so with that, I'm going to head out not head out, but head out of this video and into the real world. And I'm going to drink the rest of my Diet Coke. I feel like I need a nap. Oh, uh, I hope you're doing great. Oh, 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 <laughs> I did say I'm going to keep my giveaway open through the end of August. That is true. Um, but I'll just plug it here right now that if you go back to my previous video and put up with me rambling a lot, there's a giveaway. I'll talk more about it in a future video because... I don't, I still haven't really figured out what's going to happen. So anyway, yes, I'm going to go now. Um, I need to go get ready. I need to get Birdie to trim my bangs and I got to go take care of this jam. So I love you all. I will see you next time or I'll see you in a few days in New Jersey.